This is an Arasaka Type 38. It's a captured rifle that was brought home by a soldier, and you've seen it here on the channel before. The Type 38 Arasaka chambering 6.5 by 50 Jap or Arasaka is one of my favorite World War II rifles. The Arasaka is in essence a Japanese made Mauser rifle. And in the 30s, around 1937, Japan signed a mutual assistance treaty with other Axis powers, including Germany and, and Italy, to assist each other in their war effort. Japan had already you know, in, engaged in conflict with China and other areas and was in desperate need of military hardware. So they reached out to the Italians and contracted with the Italians to manufacture a rifle for primarily the Japanese Navy. And that's what I want to talk to you about this afternoon. I'm going to show you my original Type 38 here, and then I'm going to show you a Type I, which is an Arasaka Type 38, except made in Italy with a few Italian twists. And it would wind up being used by the Japanese in several campaigns. So let's start off by shooting this beautiful rifle. I've, again, I've shown it here on the channel before. I'm not going to go into great detail, but this is a very beautiful example of a World War II bring home rifle. The ammunition that I'm shooting is from Stenil, and it is a, uh, a newly manufactured 6.5 by 50 Jap cartridge. And these guys make amazing ammunition. I was so glad to find them. They make ammunition for all sorts of obsolete calibers, including eight millimeter Nambu and all the cool stuff I like to shoot, but many times I have a hard time sourcing ammunition for it unless you load yourself and, and you can make cases based upon a parent case for your surplus rifles, which I don't. It's kind of be, it can be hard to find ammunition, especially good quality ammunition to trust and shoot out of your mill serps. And that's where Stenil comes in. I buy this ammunition, they don't supply it to me for free but I want to plug them because they're doing amazing work. And here's an example of one of their 6.5 caliber cartridges. I'm going to go ahead and load the Type 38 up. I don't have a stripper clip, but they can be fed by stripper clips. And the Type I that I will show you here shortly will use or would use the exact same stripper clips that were used in the uh, Type 38. So let's go ahead and load five rounds here. Chamber it. I'm going to go be bold. I'm going to see if I can hit that 200 yard man size, 250 yard man size ringer here. We got a lot of wind today, guys. those last two went. In front, I have the Type I, the Italian-made rifle, and behind it, I have the Type 38 Arasaka. Let's talk about the similarities between the two guns, and then let's talk about the glaring differences between them. First of all, some of the similarities. If you'll notice, you can barely see it. There's a seam right there on the stock, and a lot of people mistake that seam as being a cracked or broken stock. You'll see more pronounced here on the Type 38, you have the grain of the stock on the stock running two different directions between these two different pieces. That's because this piece is dovetailed and pinned into the upper piece, and that was to lower the cost of production where they could use smaller pieces of wood. Every Arasaka I've ever seen uses this method of manufacturing a stock with a two-piece butt stock. The Italians did the same thing with the eye. The type I, and you can see it's a slightly darker wood on the bottom. You can kind of see the, the seam here on the wrist. But yeah, they use the exact same methods. Now there are two different types of type I's. You'll notice that the stock length on this one is roughly the same length as it is on the type 38 behind it. You will find type I's that have about an inch, maybe an inch and a half longer stocks on them. 
Now I've read a couple of different stories as to why some of them have longer stocks. Some people say that it was a mistake in manufacturing. The Japanese trimmed the ones that they got back to the proper length because they had of their smaller stature. And uh, other sources I found, I think it was Small Arms Review wrote an article years ago about the Type I, and they said that the Japanese purposely manufactured some of them with an inch longer stock because they chose uh, larger Japanese soldiers to be uh, basically naval marines and they wanted a longer stock. Which story is true? I don't know, but there are two different types of rifles. Now there are three different manufacturers of the Type I. One of them is Beretta. You can't really tell who manufactured the rifles because the manufacturer markings are underneath the receiver, so you'd have to take it out of its stock to look at the proof marks to determine who manufactured the rifle. But there's another way you can figure it out. There are no markings on the Type I, unlike the Arasaka, except for a serial number right here on the front part of the barrel. And this one has a prefix of I, which will tell you who the manufacturer of the rifle is. They, they manufactured uh, a, a number of different, they had number, a number of different prefixes and certain prefixes were allotted to uh, different manufacturers. And I'll put that up here on the screen for you. And that's from a small arms review article. So let's get back to back here. So we, the stocks are basically the same. Moving forward, we have, I'm gonna ignore the differences here in the receiver. Moving forward, we have straight bolt handles on both. All right, so very similar there. Moving up to the sights, you'll notice the sights look very similar. Now on this Type 38, you'll notice it has a V-notch here in the rear. You may find some that actually have a peep on the ladder sight. This one has a V-notch. You'll notice the sights on the Type I are identical. and for obvious reasons. Moving forward, we have the exact same hardware out front, the same barrel bands, the same end caps, the same cleaning rods. A major difference though, on the Type I, you have a, a, an unprotected front sight blade, and on the Type 38, you will find it has protective ears around that front sight. The sling swivels, are located in the exact same spot, front and rear, so the Arasaka slings could be used. Now let's talk about the differences between the rifles. First of all, look at the trigger on the Type I. It's very large by comparison to the Type 38, much smaller trigger guard. The bolt and the manual of arms are completely different. Well, I won't say completely different. With the Arasaka, you can charge the rifle and then you can put it on safe by rotating this rear piece. It's easy to do with the palm of your hand. You can rotate it into the safe position or rotate it into the fire position. Here we get into Carcano territory or Manlicher type of actions. So we have that straight bolt, but you'll notice on the top, it's an open receiver. I have the dust cover on here, but the, the receiver is not open. This is a standard Mauser action, so the receiver is not open back here. This has an open receiver so that the bolt handle moves freely through the receiver. Its safety is right here, which is also a decocker. You would push this in, rotate it up, and that decocks and puts the rifle on safe. It also blocks the line of sight so that you know the rifle's on safe. To make it ready to fire, you push it in with your thumb and rotate it over and now the rifle is ready to fire and recocked. Inside, you'll find instead of the Manlicher type of magazine and follower, you have a double stacked five round magazine, internal magazine, just like the Type 38 or a Mauser action. So those are the similarities. Now let's take a look at an actual Carcano. This is a Carcano carbine. This one's in 7.35 Carcano. But you'll notice, aside from the downturn bolt, the similarities between the two. The receivers are the same. This one uses a stripper, not a stripper, I'm sorry, an end block, which you would load in here, and then the empty end block passes through here. All right, you'll notice that's gone 
on the Type I. But on the Kirkano, the controls are the same. You have the safety and decocker on the Kirkano is carried over to the Type I. So I thought that'd be interesting to show you an actual Kirkano. Some of you may be wondering what this is. This is a Kirkano folding bayonet. You can take the bayonet off the gun completely and store it, or you can put the bayonet onto the firearm. And then you can deploy the blade by pressing a button. The blade will drop down, swing it open, push it, and now you have a bayonet. To put it back, you push the button, pull out on the blade, rotate it down, push forward, and it locks back into place. For those of you that are interested in what this was on the end of the barrel of the Kirkano. Five for five. <laughs> I like the way that little girl shoots. What a beauty. I hope you guys enjoyed coming out to the range this afternoon and doing some shooting with the Japanese slash Italian type I rifle chambered in 6.5 Jap. The rifle is an amazing piece of World War II history that is surprisingly affordable if you can find one available. Jump on Gun Broker, hit your local gun shows, look around, look for something that looks out of the ordinary. If you spot a Kirkano action, but it looks like an Arasaka, stop and take a second look. It might be worth picking that rifle up because again, it's one of those cool pieces of history that the Japanese collectors aren't all that interested in and the Italian military rifle collectors aren't all that interested in, but people like me love them. Guys, if you'd like to support us here at the Military Arms Channel, the best way to do that is to become a Patreon supporter. There is a link down below. We are viewers supported. Also, please swing by and check out coppercustom.com. Going to fire off the last few rounds of our Stenil ammunition. Please check these guys out. They're a really good company. They do great work. I want to support them because they're giving me ammunition so I can shoot my old mill serps like this Type I. All right, guys. Take care and keep collecting.